Hi, this is Shelley Kraft, and welcome to SNN Live. We are on location with Dr. Bill Dolphin at Avita Medical Symbols, AVH, on the Australian Stock Exchange, and on the OTCQX, the symbol is AVMX. Why? Now, this is an update, ladies and gentlemen, but first of all, welcome back to SNN Live. Well, thanks very much, Shelley. Good to see you again. It's good to have you. Now, for some viewers who don't know the Avita story, let's just get the quick overview for them, if you will, if you don't mind. Sure. Avita Medical is a regenerative medicine company. Uh, as we say, we are traded on the U.S. exchange as well as the Australian exchange. Our core technology relates to the regenerative approach of regrowing skin, that is, tissues that have been damaged whether it's due to trauma or disease or senescence. What an incredible industry it is. Um, you know, people, you know, obviously there's burn centers all over the world. Uh, diabetes is a disease that's growing. <coughs> Adult diabetes, uh, adolescent diabetes. I mean, your market, let's talk about first and foremost, the size of those markets. Yes, they're, they're really very, very large markets. Uh, talking about the ulcers, roughly 1% of the general population suffers from chronic wounds. And as you move up to the age of above 70, it's about 2 to 3%. And of course, with the increasing age of population, as well as, unfortunately, the increase in prevalence of diabetes, this market is really growing very large for us. Uh, we also mentioned uh, burns, a very large market again, uh, some 600,000 cases a year that would be requiring resell. Then as we move into areas such as the plastics and the aesthetics, well, how large a piece of string? Uh, they're, they're huge markets. You have to be on the military's radar screen. <laughs> I, hate, I hate to use the pun. <clears throat> yes, yeah. Uh, un unfortunately, there is an awful lot of use for resale with the military. Uh, we are funded by the U.S. Department of Defense to get through a study right now underway in the U.S. This is a phase three pivotal study for burns treatment with the FDA, and that is funded by the U.S. Department of Defense, which is a great endorsement. Okay, let's get right into the product because I think that's main, obviously uh, worth mentioning. Uh, I know that on the market are products that are creams and there's all kinds of uh, stuff that's out there. Tell us about your specific product and how it differentiates from others that are currently on the market. Certainly. Uh, all of these markets are quite large, so there's lots of competition. Uh, if there was no competition, you wouldn't worthwhile being in that market, obviously. But uh, for Burns, there is no real competition. Uh, direct competitor. In fact, uh, in any of these markets, there's no direct competitor with what we are doing. The competition is this current standard of care. So with burns, it's the grafts right now where you take a large piece of skin and slap and glue it in place, as opposed to the approach with resale, which we'll talk about. Uh, similarly, with ulcers, there's no good solution. There are other regenerative approaches using uh, scaffolding and creams, as you allude to, but none of them have been terribly effective. And the resale approach is unique. There is no other system or uh, commercialized product that allows one to take your own cells and produce the spray, which is then re-delivered to the person's wound. Resell. Resell, exactly. That's C-E-L-L. -L. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now tell us about how it's applied. Um, it can be applied in a number of different ways, either sprayed or dripped. But the, the key is uh, in the processing of this. What we do is we take a piece of your own skin, so a very small sample of skin, about the size of a postage stamp, and through a proprietary and patented process, these tissue is broken down, the cells are disaggregated, and they become activated and then reapplied to the wound. For a burn or for ulcers, it's the same sort of thing. So a very small piece of skin creates this suspension of uh, stem cell rich and mature cells rich suspension, which is then delivered back to that wound. The wound now is turned into a rapid regrowth process. And it's your cells, so and it's done right at bedside, so it's a, it's a crucial step here. So this is personalized wound care. Oh, essentially it is. That's exactly right. We're using your cells and your cells, in quote, know what the skin should be like. And so it regrows your normal skin for the area of the body that's being affected. So let me ask this question. How long does the process take from time of need to time of delivery? Well, the, the process of, of 
creating the suspension takes about 15 to 20 minutes. So a patient comes into the surgery or at a clinic and a small sample is taken. About 15 to 20 minutes later, this suspension is created and then re-delivered. So that process takes 15 to 20 minutes. The earlier the wound is treated, the better. Certainly with burns or other acute wounds, the sooner you can get to it, the better you are with resell. Is there some specific place that has to make it? Does it have to go to a lab? I, I mean, you know, I, this, this sounds almost too good to be true. No, you're actually picking out some very, very crucial points. Uh, it, it is done at bedside, so the surgeon takes a small piece of your own skin, it's processed right there, 15 to 20 minutes in the special processing kit and reapplied. There's no opportunity for infection, there's no opportunity for mistaking or, or picking up someone else's skin. Um, it is your cells, and as I say, your cells know what your body should be like. So the skin on your face is very different than the skin on your back or on your thigh. And so it knows how to grow the proper tissue. Wow, this is like, I'm kind of getting into it a little bit. Oh, it's, it's, wait, it's wait, 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 wait. fiction become reality. I have a, yes, it is. Uh, so, so here's another question. So, what are you selling? Are, are, are you selling kits? Is that is that what happens? It, you know, you grab a kit. I have a patient in the burn unit. I have a patient in, that's got a diabetic wound that just walked into the emergency room. I mean, you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's most of it right now, exactly. And certainly, uh, we are getting sales. We have early stage r revenues. We are clear to sell in Europe. We have CE marking uh, in Australia for TGA and in China SFDA, and we do have some revenues. In Revenues are always good. Selling the product is important. It gives you the validation and the verification, if you will. Patients, surgeons, healthcare systems will pay for it and use it. But I really want to emphasize that at this time, the sales and marketing is not the major priority of the company. Revenues are great, people are buying it, but we really are, resale is a disruptive technology and one has to really build this market appropriately. Um, just introducing a, mark, a product and saying, go buy it, it won't work. There are a number of steps that have to be taken and that's the process we're in. Well, this is breakthrough as far as I'm concerned because I've interviewed a lot of companies in this space. Um, so what are you doing to get into the market uh, obviously, it's through the medical community, oh, yeah. I would imagine, right? Yes, that's absolutely right. There, there's really a number of different aspects and, and a number of major activities that the company's involved with. The first part is, as I mentioned, it is a disruptive technology, and so uh, people aren't going to believe it just because we say it will work. So we have to do the clear clinical data, and this requires that we have unassailable results that really support the claims of efficacy and safety with resale. In order to do that, we have to be working with a key select group of surgeons, highly regarded, prestigious, at these centers of excellence that are doing the studies. And these studies in turn are being uh, presented at congresses, uh, also at uh, peer-reviewed journals and publications. The second part is reimbursement. We must have reimbursement. The, the, the days of uh, you know, signing up any product are long gone. Uh, uh, can I interrupt systems? you a second? Ladies and gentlemen, in today's world, reimbursement is almost more important than patents. <laughs> I hate to say it. <laughs> well, uh, you know, it, it's a patent of sorts, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because yes, it is. once you get the coding and the reimbursement, it, it gives you really uh, free range to start selling the product. And so we're, we're under that process. And that does require, again, the clinical studies and the medical economic studies working once again with the same select group of centers and surgeons. And then the third part is R&D. This resale addresses a wide range of markets. We talked about the different indications being acute wounds, burns, chronic wounds, diabetic foot ulcers, uh, venous leg ulcers, plastic reconstructive, the aesthetics for uh, treatment of acne scarring, for instance, vitiligo. All of these are separate markets. And the requirements of a burn surgeon treating a, a, an acute burn, a dermatologist treating a, a leg ulcer, an esthetician treating uh, acne scarring are very different. And we have to provide the product that meets the needs of each of those markets. Furthermore, we have to be, have the flexibility in our business model to adapt to the economics for each of these markets. And so that's the third part. And then fourth will be the sales. And we are pushing ahead with that, but that's not the key point right now. So Bill, let's from where you just ended, let's go right into talking about distribution. Let me, let me hear how that's gonna go. Yes, well, much like the product being correct, 
because there are so many markets, uh, both geographic distribution, we have the world ahead of us, and these different indications, we can't possibly go after this ourselves. And so we have a mixed distribution model. We will have some direct sales, as we do now. We are right now limited to three countries only. Our sales force is in the UK, Germany, and France, and that's it. Mm -hmm. But we will be adding on distributors because we go to the larger markets. Joint ventures are another very interesting opportunity. We have a, op we have a, a joint venture underway in Italy right now, which I'm extremely optimistic about, and then partnerships with other companies and manufacturers to really go after the entire world. And that's the way we'll be doing this. But I guess I have to emphasize, in any of these distribution channels, we still require the fundamentals, the clinical data, the support and endorsement of those key surgeons and centers, reimbursement in place, and the proper product. So all of those have to be in line. So a lot of our viewers are in the United States and North America, Canada, et cetera, Mexico, South America, tell us when can we expect to see this product in the United States, North America, and South America? I'm, I'm sorry, I got to ask the question for our viewers. No, I, I know. Uh, and, and that leads to the question of the FDA. In the U.S., we have to go through the FDA. As I mentioned already, in China, we have SFDA clearance, so we are moving in China, very important market for us. We're using the same sort of model as in Europe. Europe, we're cleared. So those are two markets. The U.S. is still the largest single market. I mentioned that we are underway with a phase three pivotal study for the treatment of burns using resell. This is funded by the U.S. Department of Defense. We are well underway with that. Um, it's difficult to give a real timeline, but we certainly expect to complete enrollment by the end of this year. And then uh, we hope that next year we will actually get clearance to sell in the U.S. It's always a dangerous guess with the FDA. It's a, it's a very complicated protocol we have. Because we are involved with stem cells, the FDA is being extremely conservative and the protocol we have is quite rigorous, necessarily so. Well, my opinion with the size of the market and what you bring to the table, please move as quickly as possible. <laughs> but anyway, let's wrap up by giving the website. Yes. The website is www.avitamedical.com. And that's A-V-I-T-A, yes. right? That's correct. Medical.com. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Dr. Bill Dolphin. The publicly traded company symbols are, and you might want to have your pencil out when I give these to you, AVH on the ASX and AVMXY on the OTC. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank... Bill Dolphin for coming on to SNN Live, on location, by the way, in his offices. And uh, I, I think getting the story out on Evita is something that our viewers are, are going to be happy to read and see and, and watch. So thank you again for coming on. Well, thank you very much, Shelley. It's always a pleasure. And yes, it's an important story, and, and we certainly are optimistic and confident that we will be moving ahead. Thank you again. Thank you.